Hi everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. This video is going to be part one of aerobic respiration but glycolysis is also in anaerobic respiration. So just to show you all the stages in aerobic respiration and each of these videos is going to be released this week. Glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm and then the final three stages in different locations will be in future videos. So what is glycolysis then? Well, first of all, just to point out the overall purpose of respiration is to produce ATP. Glycolysis is the first stage and this stage happens in anaerobic and aerobic respiration. The reason for that is this step does not require any energy and because it happens in the cytoplasm as well, it doesn't require um, any oxygen or ATP to actively transport it into the mitochondria. So it's split into three key steps. Step one is the phosphorylation of glucose. And that means you use ATP, hydrolyze one of the phosphate groups, and then add it to glucose. Now we actually use two ATP molecules to do this. So we can add two phosphate groups onto glucose to make glucose phosphate. Then glucose phosphate, is really, really high energy, so it splits into two molecules of triose phosphate. Triose phosphate is then oxidized to create pyruvate. And overall, we have a net gain of ATP, and or two ATP, and two reduced NAD. So let's have a look at this as a flow chemical reaction. So step one, glucose is our reactant, and it contains six carbons. Now the first step we said was glucose is phosphorylated to make glucose phosphate. So we need to use two ATP molecules, hydrolyze both of those to release the phosphate group, and we add one phosphate group on this side and one on this side. And whenever you phosphorylate, meaning to add on a phosphate group to another molecule, the energy that was locked up in the bond within ATP is now transferred to the new molecule. So glucose phosphate is a high energy molecule, highly reactive, and for that reason, it splits into two triose phosphates. Now triose phosphate sometimes is abbreviated to TP. Triose is the name for a three carbon sugar, and phosphate is referring to the fact it has one phosphate group attached to it. So the last step is both of those triose phosphate molecules are oxidized. And the way that we can tell they are oxidized is because the coenzyme NAD is picking up a hydrogen from that triose phosphate. So NAD is converted into reduced NAD or NADH. And that happens on both molecules. So the NAD has been reduced, whereas the triose phosphate is oxidized to form pyruvate. So in biological um, biochemistry reactions, if you do see a molecule gaining hydrogen, that is an example of reduction because a hydrogen atom is a proton and an electron. So NAD has technically gained an electron. Now, the other thing that you can see on this, this stage here is the oxidization of triose phosphate into pyruvate does release two molecules of ATP. So in total then, from glycolysis, the first stage of respiration, we've created two molecules of pyruvate. That is next going to be actively transported into the mitochondrial matrix for the next step. We have a net gain of two ATP. So although we've actually made four, because two had to be used at this stage, we describe it as a net gain of two and we've made two reduced NADH, or two reduced NAD or NADH. And those are gonna be used in the final step, oxidative phosphorylation. So that's it, that is step one, glycolysis. So if you have found this helpful today, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with the final three respiration videos.